Yeah. So still so going back on uh, Proverbs chapter 3. Uh, yesterday we looked at it, verse 11 and 12. Today we'll go on to verse uh, 13, 14, you know, and it's pretty much just going back to the value, the, 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 the value, the place of wisdom, you know, and it says that in verse 13, it says, happy is the man and the woman that finds wisdom. Meaning that wisdom is something that needs to be found. Mm. Uh, wisdom is not something that will be thrown at us. We need to find it. We need to do some, do some, and make some effort to find it. I believe it's Proverbs chapter twenty-five, verse two says that it is, it is the glory of God. You know, it, it is the glory of God to hide a matter, right? And it is the honor of kings to find it out, right? God does not put his treasure in a place that people can trample upon it. Mm. You know, and there are two sides to the story, you know, God's wisdom is readily available. Bible says that the invisible quality of God is, is declared to us in all that we see. In, all, in his creation, all around us is the invisible quality, wisdom, beauty, glory of God. Mm -hmm. But that which seemingly is easily available Need some effort to to appreciate it, to harness it, to mine it, as it were. You know, it's not ours until we mine it. It's just like gold. You know, gold is there in in the depths of the air. Sometimes not the depth of the air, even on on surface in some places. But we have to make the effort to mine it. We right. have to make the effort to refine it. Right. So that's the way to get wisdom. Wisdom is not going to throw itself at us. If wisdom is like what we say, common sense, right? We we'll say common sense because it's there easily available, but yet it's not common to all because people overlook it. People take it for granted. You know, it, it's in a package that can easily be commonized, right? You know, um, the whole of the Old Testament, you know, if he's full of the fact that God shows his wisdom in the in the things that are seemingly commonized, right? In the poor, in the in the in the small things, right? So people get to overlook it. You know, Paul will be writing and talk about the Greeks, you know, talk about the about the fact that they are looking for wisdom. They are looking for big things. Oh, they are looking for a big thing, you know, so that the foolishness of the gospel, you know, becomes it kind of kind of disappoints them. They are looking for a God that requires you to maybe go and kill your son or kill your daughter or go and sell all that you all that you have or go and kill yourself or beat yourself up, you know, for you to have an access to him. You know, okay. but he just says, just receive my son. That doesn't make sense to a lot of people. It doesn't make sense to religious people. That's why we have a lot of religion today, right? People think that you must kill yourself to, uh, to approach God. And even in what we seemingly call Christianity, we won't bring that in. You know, we call it penitence, right? Even in our seeming uh, born-again sector, we, we talk about uh, the need for people to go and make restitution, Right? All of those are man's way of trying to make difficult what God has made simple, right? Mm -hmm. Many times when you start cutting yourself, oh, I want to feel the pain because I have seen I must suffer like Jesus Christ suffered. Yeah. <laughs> That's foolishness. That's devil, mm -hmm. right? It is Jesus, the cross and nothing that saves us. Mm -hmm. it, uh, we don't get saved by our own. We don't get saved, saved by all the abuse. We don't get no. saved by restitution. We don't get no. saved by penitence. We don't get no. saved by offering. We don't get no. saved by tight. It is We get saved only by the cross of Jesus Christ. Full stop. Nothing yes. else. We don't get saved because we obey the law. We don't get no. saved because we, we, we belong to the church. We don't get saved because we belong to a set. We don't get no. saved because they, our pastor is also or a bishop, or so, so, and so. That's not the reason we get saved. The only yeah. thing that saves us is the cross, nothing yeah. else, right? And that simplicity is not enough for a lot of people, so they had things to it. They say it cannot be that easy. They had yeah. things to it. And yeah. therefore, they, 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 they demean the wisdom of God. They demean that which God has, has presented to us, right? As it were, they are demeaning glory of God, you know, because they cannot accept the simplicity of the gospel, the wisdom of God. 
you know, and, and then they, they, they give place to the devil because of that. Right. And well, let's go, we'll talk more about it. As we, um, Just like we're sharing from Proverbs chapter 3, and we're looking at verse... Uh, we're looking at verse. Uh, we're looking at verse thirteen. It says, "Happy is the man who finds wisdom." You know, just like we said again, it's not something that comes of his own accord. It's something that we need to find it. You know, again, looking at Proverbs twenty-five verse two, it says, "God, the glory of God is to hide wisdom. The glory of God is to hide the matter, because He wants us to find it out." Jesus also tells us that. He says, don't cast your pearls, don't cast your, your treasure, you know, to swines, you know, or to, or to dogs, because they will not deal with it. They will just trample it on their feet. They will not treat it the way you would want it to be treated. And that's important to God, that the things that are holy to God are treated right. You know, we, we saw God killing the sons of um of most of Aaron because they lit a strange fire. They did not value, they did not rightly esteem, they did not consecrate the things that God requires that we concentrate. See how the man, as David made the mistake of moving the ark with, with, on, 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 on an animal instead of people carrying it. We see that man trying to hold, keep the ark from falling and God struck that person because God, wants us to give value to the things he has given value to. It's important to God. You know, that's the essence of consecration. Consecration is simply separating from God, rightly esteeming that which God has esteemed. I mean, that's, that's the whole essence of consecration. That's the whole essence of holiness. If we say I'm holy, I'm saying I'm keeping this temple worthy enough for God to use, worthy enough for God to dwell in. That is holiness. Right, the only reason I keep it is because of the God that wants to dwell in it, the God that wants to use it. Right, that's that's the meaning of the word consecration, that's the meaning of the word holy. It just means something, something that is sick, that is separated out, separated for God's use, but separated for an exalted use. Right, you know, so God does not make wisdom readily available, it's part of our requirement of the experience of life, the experience of being human that will search out the matter of life, will search out the matter that concerns our life, will search out how to live our life. It will, will search out, you know, the right way to engage life, you know? And that's what God was saying again in Joshua 1.8 when he was talking to Joshua. He says, I don't let this book of the Lord depart from you, right? Because the book of the Lord tells Joshua the wisdom of God. It tells Joshua the things that are important of God. It tells Joshua the way God wants to live our life. You know, it tells us the way God wants us to, to, to walk, right? Again, in, in, in John 17, 17, Jesus Christ was praying and it says, Father, separate your church, separate your people by your word. Your word is truth. You, our God's word is God's wisdom. God's word is God's way of leading life, God's way of doing things, right? It, it, God says separate them by the word. Your word is true. But you know that there's a requirement for us to seek that word. There's a requirement for us to, 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 to read that word, to become one with that word. You know, so Paul began to write a Colossians church. I believe that's Colossians 3, 16, or is it 4, 16? He says that let the word of God dwell in you richly. You know, Peter says that we should seek the sincere make of the word. The word word there can be replaced with wisdom. You know, it says let the wisdom of God dwell in you richly. Let the word desire the, the wisdom of God. You know, again, it tallies with Jesus Christ saying to us in Matthew 16, 33. It says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. You know, we can also paraphrase that says, Seek ye first the wisdom of God, right? And let it overwhelm your life. When the wisdom of God is God's way of doing things, the wisdom of God is God's order, right? And when we seek that wisdom, allow that wisdom to overwhelm us, it will bring the blessings, you know. Of God into our life, you know. So again, is it's just going back to that word is happy, blessed, exalted, you know, honored is the man 
move by wisdom, right? Who finds it not by mistake, but finds it intentionally. He's proactive about it. He knows he rightly exhausts wisdom. So he does his part, you know, to find it and use it. May God help us in Jesus' name. Amen. Go ahead, ma'am. Praise God. So he, he, just like uh, uh-huh. you just rightly. Thank you. Yeah, the wisdom Thank of God. He said, you said you mentioned just now that. We, he, need, he wants us to seek and find wisdom. So it, yes. it means we need to search him daily. If we can't search him Absolutely. daily, we can't find him. And um, in wisdom, it tells us that our ways are not his ways at Absolutely. all. Mm-hmm. So just to buttress the point that we need to search for. So it, our thoughts yes. are never yes. his thoughts. We might yes. think we are wise in our own eyes, but it could be foolishness with God. He, he, yes. could, he could decide to use mundane things to, mm-hmm. to reach us. So it's just mm-hmm. for us to know that we need to search him. We shouldn't feel mm-hmm. too big to search him, and then we, should, we shouldn't feel uh, contented enough that, oh, what I did yesterday was enough for today. No. Every day of our life should be dedicated to have opportunity to get him, to mm-hmm. listen to him, let him have a word for us. And that's mm-hmm. why our daily devotional will come in, where yes. we have personal encounter with him. And then mm-hmm. how we relate to others, he tells us how we make use of the talent he has given us during the time we are mm-hmm. searching him and we are getting him. And at the end of each mm. moment, there is opportunity for us to have a sense on what we have done. Is it right? Is it wrong? Is there any way of improvement? So it's like a daily loaded benefit, a daily work with him. We are work in progress. God will help us. Amen. Amen. You know, and that's, you know, recently that's been reoccurring in my mind, you know, that we're spiritual beings here to have a human experience. And God wants us to have that human experience. You know, God wants us to have that human experience. We're spirits that proceed from God to have a human experience here. And we're going to return to God, right? We're going to return to God, you know, for, for judgment on, on how, we, how our human experience went. Okay. And for us Thanks. to succeed in our human spirit, yeah, we need mm-hmm. wisdom. We need, mm-hmm. you know, none of us comes here knowing how to leave this human experience. We we come empty with nothing but yeah. just the pop. But the fact is, yeah. he sent us on yeah. an errand. That's why yes. the Bible says, yes. "I just need to walk this walk that He has sent me while it is day." Because the time will yes, come yes. when I cannot do any of these things again. So wisdom yes. says we should seek him early to find him. Yes, 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 yes. Right. And one of the ways, you know, we do wisdom is by respecting those that are before us, you know. And we saw that as we, we, we were reading uh, verse 1, where he talks, he talks about my son not forgetting my law, my command. Mm-hmm. You know, so he says... That is the first commandment with promise because the commandment that gives us wisdom as we respect our parents, respect, respect authority yeah. figures, people who have lived yeah. this life before us, people who have gone, walked yeah. the path that we Yes. Mm. So we'll learn from them how they have walked it, how they have done it. We'll learn from their rags. We'll learn from their successes. We'll learn from their failures. You know, hopefully that we can do it better. You know. Amen. That, but we are the guidance, you know, and that's why the Bible says the word of God or the wisdom of God is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my heart. Right. Uh-huh. Yes. Yes, because that's what helps us to walk in the darkness. Without the word of God, we're going to stumble. We will not know where to go. Yeah. So. That's what the wisdom of God does. For us. He gives us a, he's a lamp and a light. Light is our way. It tells us where to go and where not to go. 
It tells us how to go and how not to go. It tells us what is important mm. and what is not important. It tells us what mm. to associate with and what not to associate with. You know, it helps mm. us to be able to uh, get the best maximum benefit out of this life. It mm. tells us how to attract God into our life. You know, benefit. there are things that we do that bring the presence of God. Yes. And there are things that we do that takes away the presence of God. So when we want the presence of God, when we do those things, it attracts God. You know, God comes and he breathes upon the thing that we're doing, Mm -hmm. you know, and our small become plenty, becomes much, Mm -hmm. you know, and God will help us in Jesus' name. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Epilema, (laughs) have a great evening of the day. You too. Um, 